Okay. Recording is now in progress. You go ahead. Okay. So with the um my linear uh pretest, the post test Mr. Tensley, I actually maxed out um my attempts. So I try, you know, I couldn't go back in there to do any more of the testing for the linear equations. So I did jump to uh some quadratic equations. Oh, you um, just I, shot me a text. Oh, okay, because you could have added some more on there. Yeah, yeah. I made the whole site. I could do anything I want. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm thinking like once you max out like that, you know, it's uh, it's just pretty I'm much good, it. I'm, but, I'm okay. going to do it right now. Hold on. Okay. Then the equation you said, right? Yes, the post test. The or post -test, -test. Or pre test. Pre test. Pre test. You in the equations? Where are you? There we go. Okay. Pre test. Pre test. Should be first. Where are you? Well, I got all this other stuff. That's right. I forgot because they're closing down. Uh, they're closing down um, Schoology in October. So I got to switch yeah. everything over. And a lot of things don't switch over as nice as I thought it was going to. But here, I'm on it right now. Let me do edit. I'll just make them. Let me see. Okay. I'll make them like and CK twelve is different from your program, right, Mr. Tinsley? Yeah, that's that's an outside thing that I use, but it, it's good, it got good practice. Okay, yeah, they do. I wish there was some things like you could have like uh, wow, you like, already things. already got ten times. You took it ten times. I took it ten times. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. I was working. I was working. All right, I put it up to fifteen. Oh, <laughs> So that means you got you got any specific questions on there that gave you problems? Um, actually, rather, um, the linear equations I'm getting um better with okay. and more familiar with, okay. so that's a good thing. But I still um when I had text you and put in um that I had questions about the converting because it was another way that um I was viewing on another video, but I didn't like that, Mister Tens. Like nobody can teach us this, but like you can. <laughs> I'm being honest. It's just keeping it real because like without you, like you can teach it to us and then we can do it on our own. But it's like listening to somebody else, you get off course, you get on well, focus. So, I don't like that. So that's why I said if you focus on the videos and the schoology, I'm gonna give you every single way, every single question. Like cause a lot of times, and I'm not putting down anybody because every a lot of people put effort and stuff in. But what I try to do is I try to make it as simple as possible. And direct as possible. So a lot of times, a lot of other sites or whatever, um, they might go too deep into a subject matter or explain it in a way that's going to take too long. So I try to do it as simple as possible. Like just, for example, linear equation standard form. You probably you probably didn't see anywhere else where they show you how to just, okay, negative A over B. That's it. Like you probably, right. almost every um, math educator solves for why they change it to slope intercept form but it's okay. so much easier just to say okay i know what a is i know what b is i know it just take the opposite of a put over b i got my slope that's a 10 second problem if you practice enough you'll get it so um just in terms of like even like small things like knowing all your squares and your square roots cube and your cube roots like right mm -hmm. now that might seem like a simple quiz but when you get to your exam you got pythagorean theorem the distance between two points where you're going to need your squares Yes. And then one of the first five is square, square roots, cube, and cube. So that's three questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. All right, so what, what you got for me? What, you, what can I help you with? Uh, it's the quadratic equations. I went back to them. Now, mm -hmm. I did go to CK-12. It mm -hmm. seemed like I did better in CK-12 than I did on the post test. I said, hold up. Wait. Well, well, well <laughs> let me. So part of that reason why is a lot of my assessments, I got fill-ins, right? Because I want to make it harder. I want you to experience some 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 adversity when you get to your test. Like um um, I thought Bridget was going to log in tonight. She got college ready. Okay, okay. You know what I mean. And then another young man, um, he's he passed the day also. But again, I I want to make you uncomfortable in schoology. I want you to get fifties and sixties, but then you work it out, figure it out, and then you get in seventies and eighties. So when you get to your actual exam, it's like, oh, <laughs> I didn't went through the hard part. This ain't that, but you know what I mean? So that's why I do that. So you're okay. right. A lot of times 
you'll find other places that seem like, wow, why must the 10th stuff seem so hard? Because I'd rather you struggle now and you get to your test and it's it's not hard at all. Right. Instead of, okay, yeah, I got an 80, and then you get to your test, like, oh my goodness, how do you do this problem? Yeah. So you know what I mean? All right, so quadratic equations. Let me find it. Let me go to quadratic equations. Okay. Boom. Boom. Now it's two things that I recognize because I had about seven people take quadratic equations um um this week. One thing I recognized is that you have to know the difference whether they want you to solve it or whether they want you to factor. Mm -hmm. So let me find one. Let me find a different one where A is not one, like two okay. X squared or something like that. Here go one right here. Let me put this on the screen. So it says factor the following factor the following equation. Okay. So they give you the multiple choice. What I would rather you do to solve this problem, instead of trying to factor this, what I want you to do is use the multiple choice and multiply by numerals. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is to make sure I get minus 20 at the end. So minus five times four is minus 20, minus 10 times two is minus 20. 5 times minus 4 is minus 20. 2 times minus 5 times 2 is also minus 20. So all of them, so now I, I don't have a quick way to eliminate, so I had to do all the work. So first I'm going to do, well, let me ask you, what's this? So if I'm asking, if I'm telling you to use the multiple choice to factor this and multiply by numbers, what would you do first? Let me make this. Um, and this is for anybody that, to answer that question. Oh, yeah, okay. You would, uh, what you would do first, if you um on a drill, you have to do two x times x will give you two x squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you would do two x times four, which is will what? give you plus eight x. Perfect. What's next? Okay, now we're going to do negative five times x, which is going to give you a uh, negative five x. And Minus then the last five. step. Mm -hmm. Then the last step, you want to do negative 5 times 4, which is going to give you a minus 20. Okay. What's the next step? Now, you got to do my 8x minus 5x, because those are two that together. Combine, you know, combine them. Like Light terms. Light terms. Thank you. <laughs> and what is 8x minus 5x? It's going to be 3x. So we got lucky. Minus the first answer yeah. is what is we that? wanted to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you how you would have to solve this if you were solving that algebraically. So again, you get a quadratic equation, they tell you to factor it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So so let me also show you something else real quick. Um, so say for example, right here they told you to factor, right? Oh, Brid Brid Bridget just came in. So let me give her a few seconds to speak to the class real quick. Hey, Bridget. Hey, Bridget. Can you hear me, Bridget? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me? It might be on her end. Okay. She so, might not know it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and continue till we can hear her. Bridget, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so <laughs> um, first of all, congratulations are in order. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a test. Yay. What score yeah. did you get? I, uh, 166. Which is college oh. level, right? Yep, college level. Yes. And you was worried and worried and worried, weren't you? Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, I want to thank you so much. And you guys, listen, the only thing you guys really need is that ebook. The ebook is going to give you the speed, and Schoolology is going to give you the knowledge. Them the only two things you need. <laughs> you don't need anything else. <laughs> but you got to do the, the ebook. The ebook going to give you all your speed. Now, and now, one more other thing. The did, I, did I pay you for this? Did I pay you for this? <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> nothing at all. You didn't pay nothing, but I tell you what, I listened to you and I did it. I'm telling you, the ebook is going to get you on your feet, and the 
and the schoolology is going to get you on your knowledge. You mean and your the formula, and you the mean, formula is. You mean schoology huh? is going to get you on your knowledge. Your calculator is going to get you speed. Right. <laughs> and also your formula yeah. sheet. Your formula sheet is going to help you set up the 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 the, the problems. Them yep. three is the only thing you need. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bridget. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. Yes, yes, yes. yes so now there yes. are two other people that was supposed to join us tonight. One person passed and she wanted to tell everybody the next step she took. The other gentleman, um, he just strictly did the ebook. He didn't come to class. He didn't do the YouTube videos. He just strictly did the ebook for about two weeks and then took his test. But um, and so when they join in, then I'll 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 cut to those people. But right now we want to get to this uh get back to this problem. So so we did it by multiplying binomials for all the multiple choice, and we figured out it was a. Now this is what they would want you to do. Remember, this is a this is considered a difficult problem. Okay, this is considered. Oh, I know what I wanted to do first. Hold on. If they ask, so this is the factor. They told us the fact. Yeah. What if they told us to solve it? And we got this answer. So we factored it. We got this. If they want us to solve it, how would I find the zeros of this factored form? So I got 2x minus 5, x plus 4. So this was our factor. This is fact. How will we solve this quadratic equation? Because what I saw is a lot of people are getting confused between factoring it and solving it. You factor it to solve it. Okay. So how would I get the two values of X that will solve this quadratic equation? Can somebody tell me? Mm. Or let's go to an easy one. What if I had X plus two times X so minus three? How would if I solve? Minus, what would be the solutions to this quadratic equation? You are x minus two, then minus two, plus three, and plus three. So when you get whole yeah. numbers, it's easy. But when you have like two x minus five, then it becomes a more mm -hmm. difficult. But it's still the same thing. So we know what you should see right now. Remember, math is about patterns. So finding right. zeros. What value of x would make this zero? So we that's easy. The minus that's four. Minus is easy. four. That's yeah. easy. But you do the same thing. The opposite of plus minus five? five is what? Plus five. Plus five. And then you put it over whatever coefficient is in front of the X. So your first solution to this uh, quadratic equation is five halves. The second solution is minus four. Everybody understand that? Okay. Now, again, make sure you go over it. Now, are they going to have something this difficult? Probably not. All you're going to have to do is look at the multiple choice, multiply binomials, find the one that works. And the multiple choice aren't going to be as hard as the ones I see here. Two, you're going to be able to eliminate very quick. So real quick, mm -hmm. if I was doing this by factor, if I had to factor this algebraically, this is my A is 2, my B is 3, my C is minus 3. So when A is 1, I just take C. But when A is not 1, I got to multiply A times C, which is negative 40. So what I, ha I would have to find all the uh, pairs, factor mm. pairs of negative 40, which is a whole lot. Let me see if I can run. Mm -hmm. So 1 goes into 40, 2 goes into 40, 3 does not go into 40, 4 goes into 40, 5 goes into 40. Six does not go into 40. Seven does not go into 40. Eight goes into 40. So now I know I'm done because I already have eight here. I know I'm going to reverse my signs on the other side. Minus one and 40. Minus two and 20. Minus four and 10. Minus five and eight. I want to find what pair is going to give me B, which is plus three. So eight minus five is going to give me plus three. So then I got to rearrange this. And this is where it gets difficult. I've got 2x squared plus 8x minus 5x minus 20. So what I did was I took these two. And I so this is considered the minus 5x. This is considered plus 8x. I would use those coefficients for my x's in the middle. The reason why I put the 8x first, because I know 2 and 8 share a factor. I know 2 can go into 8, and I know 5 can go into 20. If I put the 2x, the 5x first, 2 and 5 don't share a factor. This is called group by factor. I'm going to factor this first. So I look at the numbers first. 
two and eight. The highest number that goes into two and eight is two. The highest exponent is x. Take the lowest exponent. Okay, so x and x squared is the lowest x, and then I um I factor that out. So I got x left here plus four. How do I know? Because if I do two x times x, I get two x squared, and if I get two x times four, I get eight x. Then I pull out a minus five. I get x plus four. So if I divide this by five, I get x. If I divide this by negative five, I get four. And what you want to do is you want to make sure they share a factor. That's how I knew to pull out a minus 5 and not a 5 because I wanted this factor to be the same, x plus 4. Once they share a factor, you can combine these two. 2x minus 5, x plus 4. I can guarantee, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. Trying to solve it this way is going to take you 5 to 10 minutes. So my advice to you is when you see it factored and you have the multiple choice, Make sure you learn how to multiply binomials. Instead of spending five to ten minutes on one problem, now you only took a couple minutes. Again, now, this last way is using the ebook, and you store in two, three, and minus 20 into your calculator, and you put it in your calculator. So you can also solve it that way. So I gave you three ways to solve that quadratic equation or factor. Oh, no problem, Bridget. Um, I'll expect your email. What I'll do is I'll send you what science I need you to study. And basically, we'll go do one session for science. And you should probably, since you did so well in math, you can probably turn right back around and do your science in like a week or two. Okay, cool. All right, then. All okay. right. Send me an email. I sure will. If, if you don't have it by tomorrow, just shoot me a text reminding me. Okay, I will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, so that's one fact. Let's go to solve. Let's go to one that says solve. And I want to show you the difference. That one was factoring. Now we want to find one that says solve. If I can find one that says solve. Here we go right there. Nope. Factor, factor, factor. Big one right there. Boom. Okay, this one says solve. Solve for X. So remember, you factor to solve. So even when you solve in a quadratic equation, you're still going to factor. Okay, so watch this. X squared plus 3X minus 18. Okay, so A is 1. B is 3. C is minus 18. Does everybody understand where I get the 1, 3, and the minus 18 from? Yes. Perfect. So all you're doing is taking the coefficients of the variables, and then C is just your constant. When A is 1, we're going to factor C. We're going to find a factor pairs of minus 18. So can someone, if we start with 1, 1 times 1 is going, what? Going to give me negative 18. 1 times negative 18. Negative 18. And then, we, listen, I'm just going in order. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is why knowing two. your multiplication tables are very important. 2 times what? Mm -hmm. give me minus 18. Negative, negative nine. 9. Negative 9. 3 times what? It'll give me negative 18. 6. Negative 6. Negative six. Sean, I muted you because I heard that phone. Now, four does not go in 18. Five does not go in 18. Six goes in 18, but we already have six. Hold on, Mr. Tony. We don't have six already. We have negative six. But what you have to remember is, remember, we're reversing the signs on the other side. So now, that's all we're doing is reversing the signs. Negative one and 18. Negative two and nine. Negative three and six. Again, remember, mm -hmm. you want to find what pair three. is going to give us three. Negative three and six. So you're going to take that negative three and six, the variable is X. Mm -hmm. X minus three, X plus six. X plus this is factor. This is not solving it. This is factor. To solve it, we want to find our zeros. We got X plus three. So the opposite of minus three is plus three. The opposite of minus six. plus six is minus six. So your two answers that solves this quadratic equation is three and negative six, which is right there. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, Mr. Tinsley, I'm telling you, quadratic equations give me issues. I'm just, I'm just having a hard time. Understand what a, a, an equation means. It means equal. That means with any value of X, 
that you plug into that equation should give you what? Remember, this is why it's important for you to remember. The standard form of a quadratic equation is equal to zero. And Mr. Tinsley, I don't see zero. You got to assume that it's equal to zero unless they give you equal in some other number. But if it doesn't say it like the one you see here, let me make this bigger, actually. Make this a little bigger. If you don't see it, assume that it's equal to zero. That's what. That's why it's important for you to know the standard form of a quadratic equation. So that means each number I'm going to plug in here, right? I'm going to do it by hand first. I'm going to plug six in. Six squared plus three times six minus 18. 36 plus 18 minus 18. The minus 18 and plus 18 are left, 36. That's not equal to zero. That means it cannot be six. So I don't right. even have to test the minus three. I know it's not A. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Now, you go to the second uh, uh, choice. I had to, re to erase that. You go to the second multiple choice, which is minus six and three. So remember, minus six squared is not equal to minus six squared. This is equal to minus 36. This is equal to minus six times minus six, which is positive 36. This is the biggest mistake people make. So when I have a negative number and I have to square it, I'm going to put it in parentheses. So now you get minus six squared, which is 36. Three times mm -hmm. minus six is minus 18. And then minus 18. 36 minus 36 is zero. So I know mm -hmm. minus six is a is one of the answers. I, but I remember a quadratic equation can have up to two solutions. Yeah. So now I got to try three. Okay, so I'm going to try three. Let me erase this six in here. And let's try three. Three plus three. So three squared is nine. Three times three is nine minus 18. 18 plus, I mean, 18 plus 18. 9 plus 9 is 18. Minus 18. 18 minus 18 is 0. So now, oh, Mr. Tinsley, that took me a while. Well, the second way I'm, the last way I'm going to show you is that if you went through and you know how to store a variable in your calculator, this problem mm -hmm. now doesn't take you three minutes. It doesn't take you two minutes. It takes you one minute. Watch. Six store X. X squared plus three X minus 18. Did I get zero? No. No. So I go to my next one. Minus six. Minus six store X. Now, I don't even have to write that expression. I don't have to write the quadratic expression over again. I'm going to go up to it. Press enter. Did I get zero? Yes. So I know minus six is the answer. Now I'm going to try three. Three store X. Enter. Go back up to my quadratic equation. Press enter. Did I get zero? Yep. 30 mm -hmm. seconds. So instead of wasting 10, 15 minutes, go through that ebook or ebook. Make sure you know how to store those variables. Because that's if you know how to store variables, you can solve some of these problems just by plugging the values in. And this is one example of where you can plug the values in and you don't have to waste five to ten minutes of your time and still get it correct. All right, what's next? So we handled the uh, 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 quadratic equation. Who else got another question? What's next? Uh, inequalities. Say it again. Inequalities. Inequalities. Okay. I'm glad you said that because I had it all ready. I, I had it all ready for us. Watch this. I had it somewhere. I thought I had it open. Here we go, right here. See, what happens, I go through the, the assignments that people take during the week. And the ones that people get wrong the most, I then go over. So, But I like to ask, because I don't know who's coming every week. This is why I ask individuals, what do you need? This is why these classes are so important. A lot of times you go to other classes, they're going over lessons. 
you can do the lessons during the week on Schoology. And then anytime you have questions on something you don't understand, that's what you use this for. So let me solve this one here. Let's see if we can do it. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the problem down and then I'm going to go to a blank screen. Because I don't even want you to see the answer. I want you, I want you to see. I don't. I want you to see if you can do it algebraically. Okay. So, if I need to solve this inequality, what would I do first? Uh, what is that? When you have to uh, multiply the distributive property. Yeah, distributive property. Okay, it's good to know the terminology too. The distributive property. I so what is minus three times x? Uh, negative three x. Negative three x. What is negative three times negative one? Uh, not a three. What kind of three? Negative is a positive three. Positive three is greater than or equal to eighteen. Okay, so remember, two negatives when you multiply them together makes a positive. positive. So again, if you're not sure, you listen. This is what. Why I tell you, take 30 days, take two weeks to learn this calculator. If you're not sure, watch this. Minus three times minus one. Oops, minus one. That way you get practice. So each time you're doing sign numbers, you plug it in the calculator when you're done. So if I had minus 32 divided by eight, a, a negative and a positive make a negative. So 32 divided by eight is four. I should see negative four. That way you checking yourself and using the calculator at the yeah. same time. Okay, those things are important. So now, what is our next step to solve this inequality? We did the distributive property first. What's the next step? What when we, okay, let me see. When you do the negative three X plus, plus the three. So, so negative three X plus three does what? What do you do with that? Is that what you're telling me to do? No, no, I'm not. How no, will we no, solve no, for no. X? No, 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 no. We're not doing it like that. I'm in my mistake. We wanted to, okay, with a plus three at, it will be minus three. Correct. On both sides. Okay. Correct. Okay. So we want to combine like terms. Right. right. So we mm -hmm. want to subtract three. We're going to put all the numbers together. Right, so right, all right. All the constants together. So whatever, we subtract three to move it from, remember, you do the opposite operation. So we subtract right. three mm -hmm. on one side. We do the same thing on the other side. We get yeah. minus 3x plus 3 and minus 3 cancel. We bring down the greater than or equal to the sign. What's 18 minus 3? 15. 15. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the. So this was the first step. This was the second step. What's the third step? Okay. Now we're we really going to divide. Divide by negative what? Negative three. Negative three on both sides. You want to divide. So the reason why we're dividing is because the term minus three x can mm -hmm. be can be looked at as minus three times x. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide mm -hmm. by negative three. Remember, anything you do on one side, you got to do on the other. But this is where people make the mistake. When That's you awesome. multiply or divide by a negative, when you're trying to isolate the variable, when you're trying to get the variable by itself, when you multiply or divide by a negative, which we did here, mm -hmm. you have to change the inequality. Yeah, set the sign. So the actual answer for this problem is yep. x less than or equal to minus 5. This yes. is why most people get it wrong because when you multiply or divide by a negative, you're trying to isolate the variable, you got to change the inequality. Everybody understand that? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to practice. We're going to see if you got it right. Where are my inequalities at? Let me go to another problem and I'm going <laughs> to give everybody the opportunity. Let's do this one here. No, I see the answer is already given. See, I'm like, oh, oops, you got the answers on the screen, Mr. Tensei. Oh, I'm gonna make one up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make one up. I'm gonna make one up. He's screaming. Minus five. X plus two is less than eight.
Mm. That's it. That's it. Minus okay. five times the quantity of X plus two is less than or equal to 25. And you can put your answer in the chat. Now, when you're writing less than or uh, less than is that way, mm -hmm. less than or equal to, you can put it that way, greater than that way, greater than or equal to, you can put it that way in the chat. Because you can't, you don't, oh. you don't have a symbol for less than or equal to. Or, or equal to. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I, I apologize. Um, I didn't post the class to Facebook today. Um, I had meetings all day at work. So I got the post out I, earlier than I usually. I think I sent it out like 12 or 1, and I didn't post it to the Facebook groups. I, I, I forgot that I was very busy at work. So um, I just wanted to mention that. But here we go. Minus 5 times the quantity of X plus 2 is less than or equal to 25. Okay. Uh, okay. You put it in chat? Yes, you can put it in chat. I hope it's right. Okay, Sharon, I don't even know what the answer is. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> uh, Wait. I think that's right. I think that's right. Okay. Not a hundred for sure, because I ain't do it, but I'm doing it in my head real quick. Well, do it, do it. <laughs> <clears throat> I did have to, I, I, I usually set the timer, I forgot to set it, but it's been about a minute and a half, so we've got about a minute left. And then I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it. So, let's see if we can get this problem. i got one person that sent me the answer in the chat. About thirty seconds left. Oh. 
Okay. Okay, let me stop it. Let's see if we can go. So now I got, one, let me see how many people answered this question. So let me, so let's go here. Because I, I don't want to just give the answer out. And and Sharon, you answered. So we're going to let you, so for everyone else here besides Sharon, let's see if we can get the first step. What's the first step to solve this problem? Can somebody tell me besides Sharon? Barn a lifetime? Nope, not yet. Distributor property. Dis distributor property. So distributor property, how do we know when to use the distributor property? When you have some type of um um parentheses, which is multiplication, but you have more than one term in the parentheses. So we distribute that negative five, multiply that negative five by everything in the parentheses. So what is minus five times x? Negative five x. Negative five x. And then what's next? Um, negative five plus two or negative five, not plus two, negative five times two. Okay. And what's negative five times two? Minus ten. Minus ten. Is less than and equal to twenty five. Now remember, always in algebra. Your goal is to get the variable by itself. So what term do we need to get rid of in order to get the x by itself? Are we trying to get rid of the minus five x or are we trying to get the minus get rid of the minus ten? The minus 10. What's the opposite of minus 10? Um, plus 10. Plus 10. Whatever we do on one side, do on the other. we do on the other. So we're going to now combine everything. We're going to bring down the minus 5x. 10 minus 10 is 0. We're going to bring down the less than or equal to. What's 25 plus 10? 35. 35. Now, x, now remember, solving Algebraic equation, solving algebraic inequalities, trying to get the variable by itself. Is the variable by itself? Is the variable by itself? No. No. So, the variable is not by itself. What do we need to get rid of? Got to get rid of that 5x. Nope, not the 5x. The variable is the x. Um... Uh, right. So get rid of five. What's in front of that X? Minus five. Minus five. That's the important part people forget. That number is not five. We're not trying to get rid of a five. There's no five there. That's negative five. Negative five and positive five are two different values. Okay. So how do we get rid of the negative five? If we're multiplying negative 5 times x, how do we get rid of that negative 5? Um, divide. Divide by what? Negative 5. Negative 5. Whatever we do on one side. We're doing the other side. The two negative 5s cancel. We bring down the x. Because we divided by negative 5, what happens to this inequality? It flips. It flips, so it becomes greater than or equal to. And what is 35 divided by minus 5? Um, negative 7. Negative 7. So the answer to this would be x greater than or equal to minus 7. Uh, I see why I, I do this to myself, Mr. Tinsley, and I have to stop doing that. I've had the entire process correct, but was scared to do it because I'm thinking it was wrong. So remember, once you get your answer, just test it. Right? Watch this. This is what I mean by test. For example, a number greater than minus seven. So that could be anything. Minus six, minus five, minus four, minus three. Anything to the right is greater than minus seven. I'm going to just use zero. Or minus two. So if I use zero, let me change my color. I'm a blue. If I, if I use zero, I mean... Zero, all right, because that is greater than minus seven. So I'm gonna plug it in. Minus five times zero plus two is less than twenty-five. Minus five times two is less than or equal to twenty-five. Minus ten is less than or equal to twenty-five. That's true. I know I'm right. 
That's simple. This is why you can also use multiple choice. You can use your multiple choice, but you have to identify what those numbers are. But you can do it. So I explain that in my uh, ebook also. But again, solving inequalities, usually you're going to have two to three inequalities on your exam. They're usually going to give you one that's explicit. And then usually they're going to give you What's that noise coming from? So I had to mute you, Miss Davis, because I could hear the wind. So again, yeah, sorry. That's no problem. So inequalities, inequalities will be two to three problems on your exam. They're gonna be explicit, or they have problems like this, and sometimes they'll have a word problem. The key words you want to look for, less than, more than, greater than or equal to, those will tell you um, your inequality in the word problem. Again, this is why you go to school, G, practice, practice, and more practice. If you can do, if you can score over 70 on my inequalities quizzes, you ready for anything they're going to give you on your, on your um, exam. All right, so we talked about quadratic equations. We talked about inequalities. What's next? Miss Barber. Okay. Miss Barber. Yes. What quiz did you take uh, either yesterday or today? You um, inequality. Oh, so you. Oh, so that answered your question too, huh? It did. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> So I, I knew I had saw your name when I marked some assessments either yesterday or today. No, yeah, it couldn't have been yesterday because I was I was partying yesterday. So it couldn't be yesterday. So it must have been this morning. <laughs> All right, who's next? Who has another question? I think somebody said word problems. What yeah, type it's a word problem. You have um, it? Yeah, I have it. I wrote it down. Is it on Schoology or? Uh, no, no. Okay, tell me what it is. Um, it, it says first home store rents lawnmowers for ten dollars. For ten dollars, um, plus six dollars per hour. Mm -hmm. Jake paid. Sixty-four dollars to rent to rent the lawnmower. Is that sixty-four dollars? Yes, sixty-four dollars to rent the lawnmower. Okay. Well, how many hours did he rent the lawnmower? See, these kind of quest word problems is like how to set it up to. You know, Cakewalk. Let me show you how. Did it give you multiple choice or was it filling? Uh, they did. But I didn't write the answers down. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Watch this. Common sense. Right? $10. No matter what. Cost me $10. Plus the first hour, I got to pay what? Uh, $6 per hour. Well, that's Plus yeah. 6 Yeah. Gives me what? Uh, that's 16. You want to do 16 plus 6? 22, right? Plus 6. 28. Oh, plus six, okay, okay. 34 plus 6. 40. That'll take you all day, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but watch this. What, what you should realize is this is not changing. Right? That's the constant, correct? That's the constant. That's what constant right. means, not to change. That's your B. Mm -hmm. okay. It's changing six dollars per hour, so that's variable. <laughs> it's changing. That's your, slope. that's your slope. That's your M. So now, what you should be able to do once you identify your slope and you identify your y-intercept, the equation should be easy. What's the linear equation for this problem? Y equals mx plus b. 
So okay. it's going to well, be well, we know y, y equal is 6x. Mm-hmm. 6x uh, plus 10. Plus 10. Now, that's our linear equation. So if you wanted to find out how much it would cost mm-hmm. anytime you want to rent it, that's the equation you're going to use. Where what I would change, though, instead of using x, I'm going to use h. H standing for how many hours? Hours, yeah, okay. Okay. Because your variable could be anything. So I would call it y equal c h plus 10. But then you know what? I would change one more thing. I would say the total cost $64. is c equal 6h plus 10. So now I have my okay. equation. But I know the total cost, which is what? 64. So instead of c, which is my cost, I'm going to put 64. 64 equals 6h plus 10. Now this becomes a two-step algebraic equation. So if my equation is 64 equals 6h plus 10, how can I get the h by itself? What do I need to get rid of first? Yeah, minus 10. I got to get rid of the 10, which the opposite of plus 10 is? Minus, minus 10. Minus 10. Whatever I do on one side, I do on the yeah, other. On the other side. Wow. 64 minus 10 is? 54. 54 <laughs> equals 6H. The 10's cancel. H is still not by itself. 6 is being multiplied by H. How can I get the H by itself? You have to divide it. Divide by what? Divide 6. Divide, divide by six. 6. Whatever I do to one side, five. I do on the other. The 6 is canceled. H is equal to was 54 divided by 6? Nine. Nine. So the number of hours, if you rented the lawnmower oh, for wow. nine hours, it would cost you $64. Now, we're not done. Let's check it. We plug that in. <laughs> 6 times 9 plus 10. 54 plus 10 yeah. is 64. 64. Done. We just yeah. check. Hmm. You're going to have two problems like this. Really? Okay. Guarantee you, you're going to have it. You're going to have it. You are going to have it. They're going to talk about hats or caps or graduation gowns <laughs> or something. <laughs> but the problem is the same. So what you're looking okay. at, when you read this word problem, what's changing, what's not changing. No matter how many hours you rent this lawnmower, you're going to have to pay $10. That's your constant. Six dollars per hour. Listen to what is what is what does variable mean? Variable means to change. That cost is going to change. If I run it for one hour, it's going to be six dollars plus ten. If I run it for two hours, it's going to be twelve plus ten. If I run it for three hours, it's going to be eighteen plus ten. So that second term is changing. Well, what does change mean? Variable. That's how you know what's the variable, what's the constant. Get your gotcha. linear equation. You go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> ooh, 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 wow. Learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> I look, but I get listen. This question you're going to have. Oh, yeah. Not this question specifically, but this type of question. You're going to have maybe two. You're going to have two of them. You might have three. You have to be ready for this type of question. You have to be ready for this type of question. Now, let me start over. So let's look at it like this was a problem on the GED. We already know the answer was not, but this is what I'm going to tell you. Remember, this is how we just solved it algebraically. Now we're going to do common sense. Okay. A is seven. B is eight. C is nine. D is 10. These are the number of hours. Okay. Six, seven times six plus 10, 52. Eight times six plus 10, 58. Nine times six plus 10, so what are, hold on, 54, 64. Yeah, you, you're right, you're right. 10 times six plus 10 equals 70. Without doing any algebra, you just use the multiple choice to get your answer. I'm done. That's no algebra at all. Mm -mm. But you have to understand that the answer they give you is the number of hours. So since I'm getting charged six per hour, that's multiplication. 
Now you don't even have to do any algebra. You just plug it in. And again, I have to reiterate. Again, you're going to have two problems like this. Hold on, Mr. Tenzi. Why do you keep saying it? You repeated yourself three times. Why? Because you're going to see problems just like this. So be ready to answer a question just like this. Quadratic equations. You're going to have to factor a quadratic equation. You're going to have to multiply binomials. And you're going to have to solve a quadratic equation. So hold on. Hold on, Mr. Tinsley. So you just tell me, question like this, we're going to have at least two. Quadratic equations or multiplying binomials. Or factoring a quadratic equation is going to be three problems. Hold on, Mr. Tins. That's five questions. Mm -hmm. Inequalities. Hold on, Mr. Tins. You told me but that's going to be two to three questions. So tonight's lesson is about eight questions, at least eight questions on your exam. Hold, hold on, Mr. Tins. You've got to be kidding me. So if it's only 40 questions on the exam, we just went mm -hmm. over 20% of the exam tonight. Yes. Wow. Yes. So what you should be doing is watching this video. If you got the whole week, watch each part of the day, go to school, you practice until you score over 75 or 80. Then you go to the next one and you do the same thing. You got it. Then you move on to the next thing. This is what we did tonight is about 20% of your GD exam. <laughs> one more question before we go tonight. One more question. Who got one for me? Oh, I, I got one for you, Mr. Tizzy, but I got this one off for the, uh, the what's that, CK-12? It's keep... another word problem, because I'm, I'm, I'm with Sharon here. Okay. Um, <laughs> they said, <laughs> they said um, bananas cost 70 cent a pound, right? So you say and bananas he... cost 70 cent? Yes, yeah. 70 cent. And okay. then you have um, peaches that cost 90 cent a pound. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have exactly $21 and 20 cent at the stand. You need to buy 11 bananas. But how many peaches can you buy? Oh, oh, oh. you got to buy oh. 11 bananas or 11 pounds. 11 bananas. You can't answer that question. You can't even answer it. Because you don't know how much a banana weighs. So if it said 11 pounds of bananas, that's one thing. If they tell you you got to buy 11 bananas, you can't even do that problem. Period. That's, can't even do it. But this is what we're going to do. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to change it up. So, 20, so you got $20 to spend on... Um, uh, uh, both of them. What's the next part of it? Did you get any other part? It just stated that how many peaches can you buy? That's a terrible question. Can he do it? <laughs> it can't I don't do know it. Where they got that. It can't do it. Well, what if Daddy so said eleven? Pounds? So they they probably want you to do a system of equations. So what we're gonna do is let me oh. find a system of equations. Let me see, I'm gonna just um let me let me see if I got I got school with you still. Let me clear everything. And I'll, I'll find a system of equations one in, in, in Schoology. So what they probably have probably have you doing is a system of equations. Okay. Yeah. So let me find a system of equation problem. Here we can go to go back to section one. Go to practice tests and additional practice problems. We're gonna go to system of equations. Here, and we're gonna find some piece of fruit for you, cause I think I got one with some fruit. I got some nuts on here. Yeah, you know, I got questions, and I got fruit, nuts, all kinds of stuff. Let me see. Let's see if I can find one with fruit. Let's see if I can find some fruit. I may not have fruit. But if I don't have fruit, I might make one with there fruit There you tonight. go. You just passed one. Some about some almonds. Oh, we did that one last week. That was yeah. Some, we oh, did. Let's see. Let's do uh, I don't know, uh, tulips and roses or something. Simone, how are you this evening? Did you just? 
I thought I thought I seen it log in. Okay, so let's look at this. Something like this, right? Yes, sir. Okay. First of all, would you have to realize? Okay. So, so part of the question to this is, how do I know this is a linear equation? How do I know this is a system of equations? When, how do I know when to use what? Well, a system of equations is just a pair of linear equations. Okay? So, you got two variables. You got tulips and you got roses. So, let's X stand for tulips, Y stand for roses. You know what? I'm tired of using X's and Y. You can use T and R. <laughs> You can use B and C. I don't care what you use. Right? But just for our sense of purposes, we're going to use X and Y. We could use T and R. Let's use X and Y. So tulips is X. Roses is Y. First thing we know, you bought six pack packages of six tulip bulbs and ten boxes of, for a total. So six times the price of the tulips plus ten times the price of the roses equal $148. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Now, I can't see the whole question. So, for, oops. Uh, I got to make it small. I apologize. Hold on. So, make it smaller so we can see it. There we go. So, oh, I got to redo all that. Hold on, hold on. I apologize. Hi, Mr. Tansley. Simone, how, who's that? Simone? Yeah. How are you? Good, man. I'm doing great. So I heard you got some good news for us. Can you share the good news? Yep. Um, um, currently, after graduating, I, start, I started at Phoenix, University of Phoenix, and um, I'm doing cybersecurity, and I'm getting straight A. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, so everybody. the reason why I want her to call to, to, to chime in today is that listen, math may be a struggle right now, <coughs> but once you prove to yourself that you can pass it, your mind should now say, What's the next step? What's the next challenge? Because math yeah. gave me all these problems, but now I'm used to studying. I'm used to overcoming hurdles. I'm using not knocking down barriers. Did you hear what she just said? She said, I'm in school for cybersecurity. <laughs> she about that money. She about to get paid. <laughs> Got to know that's where the money at. Now, y'all can do this. it, man. Y'all can do it. I'm going to tell you some more good news. I'm going to tell you some more good news. I'm also no IT, too. So if you need some help with IT, I can help you with that, Real? too. Oh, my God. I need it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me finish this last question before we leave tonight. So six packages of tulips. We said tulips was X. We said rose bulbs was Y, so 10Y equal 148. Our second equation is 14 tulips, 14X, plus 12 oh, boxes of roses equal... Oh, uh, who made this question up? I must have been in a bad mood this day. Oh, my God. Goodness, I must have been in a bad mood this day. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna do it. It should. This doesn't work out lovely. So this is a, a very, a more difficult problem. Okay, so yeah. All right, so we got to find a common denominator or common or or a, a greatest common factor or least common de denominator. Because we're trying to cancel one of these variables. So remember, in the system of equations, the whole goal is to eliminate one of the variables. But this, this is, you're never going to get something like this on GD. Now, you might get something like this on your Accuplacer or your ASVAB or, um, or your, interest, your college interest exam. But on the GD, they will not be this hard. So I'm just going to run through it real quick. So I'm going to multiply this equation by minus 12. I'm going to multiply this equation by 10. Why? Because minus 12 times 10 is minus 120. 10 times 12 is 120. That way I'll cancel the y's. Because we want to know what tulips are. That means I need to solve for x. So I mean I need to get rid of y. Now, you know, this is 
This is not a hard problem. So I'm going to need your help real quick. So we got minus 72x, minus 120y. So can somebody tell me what 148 times 12 is? 1480. And 1776. 1776. And it's a negative because of negative times a positive. Then we got 140x. Plus 120y equal now. This is not as hard. I just got to add a zero. 2320. I'm going to combine them. Can somebody tell me what 140 minus 72 is? 8 and 40, 68. 68. The y's canceled. What's 2320 minus 1776? It was 220. So that's 5. Am I right? Anybody? What's 2320 minus 1776? I said, I think I said 554, I believe. But let's see if that's it. Anybody can help me out? 2320 minus 1776. It's 544. Ooh, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I used to be smart, but I now I prove to myself I may be still smart. Now, to get X by itself, we need to divide by 68. Yeah. Can, some, some, can somebody tell me what 544 divided by 68 is? Eight. 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 Yep. Now, you listen. Wow. I don't know why I got I don't know why I made this problem. I, I must have been I must have been mad that day. <laughs> 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 but you're never going to get anything this difficult. But you should be able to understand the steps. Why? I got to uh, identify my variables. So X is going to stand for my tulips, Y is going to stand for my roses. Okay, because I know X and Y stand for my different flowers, now I can make my equations. 6X plus 10Y equals 148. Then I can make my second equation. 14X plus 12Y equals uh, 232. So where this becomes difficult is because, remember, I only gave you three ways when I told you system of equations. I said either um, you try to eliminate one of the variables, you multiply one equation by some coefficient, either multiply by negative, or they already canceled. The reason why I gave you those three options, because that's the only three options the GED is going to give you. They're not going to give you something that's difficult. But in this problem, what I had to realize, I had to eliminate one of the variables. But because they wanted to know how much tulips cost, which is my X, that told me I want to eliminate my Ys. So what do I have to do? Now, I, could, I probably could have used 60. I could have multiplied this uh, uh, top one by minus 6. And multiply it. So you do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then 120. I mean, 12 is 12, 24, 30, 36, 48, 60. So really, I should have multiplied, I should have tried to get 60. But because multiplying by 10 is easy, I said, okay, 10 times 12 is 120. That's easy. Multiply the top one by 12, the bottom one by 10. I need one of them to be negative so they cancel out. So I multiply the top equation by negative 12. I multiply the second equation by 10. When I did that, I distributed that 12. I got minus 72x, minus 120y, minus 1776. I multiplied the second equation by 10. Again, I got to distribute that 10. You can't just multiply something by 10. You have to do it to the entire equation. So 10 times 14 is 140x, 10 times 12 is 120y, and then 10 times 232, you just add in a zero. So that's one of the things, one of the quizzes I have in, in, in Schoology, multiplying, dividing by powers of 10. You should know that multiplying by 10 is just adding a zero at the end of that whole number. So I got 2,320. Those, those y's cancel. I got 68x equals 554. Divide both sides by 68. We get x is equal to eight, and that's how. Now that's a very difficult problem, and the difference is also that I only gave you one answer. I didn't say uh, tulips cost eight dollars and roses cost something else. On the GED, they'll probably give you both. So the answer to this, the best thing is just to plug them in. That way, you want to do all this algebraic work. But again, this is a very difficult. I wouldn't worry about something like this, but if you can do it. That means you can do system of equations, anything they give you. So that's why I probably put it on here just to, 
to let people know that if you can do this type of problem, you can probably solve any system of equations that's going to be on the exam. And again, all of my questions are probably much harder than what you're going to see on the GD. So when you get to the GD, your system of equations, they're going to give you an explicit one, and then they're going to give you a word problem. The word problem, you just plug in the multiple choice. Okay? Thanks, Mr. Now, 10 after 7. I appreciate you. Simone, congratulations. Wonderful way to go. Again, all of us, if you have a GED schedule coming up, just like I did last week with um with the Bridget. She said her test yeah. was on Wednesday. I did a one-on-one -on -one with her Wednesday morning. Wow. She went in and got college ready on her GED exam. But when you schedule your exam, give me about two to three or four days to schedule your one-on-one -on -one before your exam so you can go back over the video and go back over any concepts you need to uh, reinforce. Okay, so if yeah. you have a test schedule within the next 30 days, make sure you schedule your one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Okay. Yep. Everybody have a good night. Y'all swear to Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye bye.